Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and today we are counting down the five habits of a successful tarantula keeper. So let's jump right in. Number one on the list is something that's probably not for everyone. This really depends on the size of your collection. But if you've got more than like 20 or 30 tarantulas or pet spiders, and this includes reptiles and, and other exotic pets that eat insects, the first habit you can get into is breeding your own feeders. Now again, this isn't for everyone. Crickets are disgusting. They require multiple bins, they need heat light, they need all, you know, they smell bad, they're very loud. They're not my favorite, I don't breed crickets. But breeding your own feeders will save you some money, especially if you have a large collection. It seems these chain pet stores are charging more and more for crickets every month. And you don't really know the health or the quality of those feeders. When you're breeding your own feeders, you know exactly what they've been eating. You know if they have any potential issues like mites or some strange fungus growing on. So you can be confident that the crickets or other insects that you're feeding your tarantulas are healthy. And you also have the ability to constantly keep them gut loaded by feeding them fresh fruits and vegetables. And it's going to save you a lot of time. You don't have to travel to the pet store every couple of weeks or every month. Wait in line. Wait for the sales associate to get around to getting your feeders. One of my biggest pet peeves is going to a chain pet store, asking for uh, 50 or 100 crickets, and then standing around for 20 minutes waiting on them to get them. Then having to stand in line again just to get up to the register. It's much easier to just just breed them in-house. I've got a thriving dubia roach colony. I think I just bought like 20 dubia roaches, and occasionally I'll buy some more to supplement the bloodlines, but they're prolific breeders as long as you give them the right conditions. And the fact that they're a tropical species, if you live somewhere like I do where it gets really cold, or at least doesn't stay really humid and in the upper 80s, they're not gonna be invasive. They can't procreate in cooler conditions. So you don't have to worry about them getting loose and, and infesting your house. Same with mealworms. I met some really cool people in the UK, and they have a really cool product that makes breeding mealworms very easy. So these are mealworm growing pods. They let people grow mealworms in their house in a really nice convenient way. So you can see here they, they come in trays like this. You can see here in this tray they're filled with beetles. The beetles lay eggs. The eggs fall through these holes. They collect in here. Then after a couple of weeks they'll look some they'll it looks a bit more like this. So in here is filled with tiny uh, mealworm eggs. These eggs give them a few more weeks to develop. You might be able to see one, I don't know. Yeah, I don't it's, think it's coming in, but we're getting an idea. Yeah. It kind of looks like dust. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, exactly like dust. And then after a few more weeks, it'll look like this. They'll be filled with mealworms. You can feed them bran, wheat, uh, and then you can also feed them your waste feed. So like, you know, I think they're here with some saddle leaves, chuck them in there, nice carrots, fun. apples, whatever. All good, so you can recycle your food waste, create insect protein for your pets, and yeah. also have some plant fertilizer. So if you look in here too, all this brown stuff, it's their frass, that's great plant fertilizer. Nice. And red runner roaches are another viable option. They're easy to breed, they're easy to keep alive. Most tarantulas will jump on the opportunity to eat them, but you do have to be careful they don't escape because they can infest your house. And while this habit may not apply to those that only have one tarantula or, or a dozen tarantulas, in your case, it may be easier to just go to the pet store a couple times a month and pick up feeders. But anyone that's building a large collection or breeding or just, you know, just has a lot of animals in their house, breeding your own feeders will save you a lot of time and a lot of money. And if you're like me, it's awesome to have one less thing you need to leave the house to go and do. All right, the number two habit for a successful tarantula keeper is tracking your feedings and molts. A lot of people do this automatically just out of curiosity or because that's part of the hobby they enjoy. But the bigger your collection gets, the more important it is to do this. It really helps you to be able to stay on top of your care. Having documentation of the last time a spider was fed or the last time that they molted really gives you the ability to give them the best possible care that you can. As the hobby grows and more people are keeping tarantulas, and as scientists and researchers focus more on tarantulas, having a large database of information as far as feeding intervals and how often or what time of the year tarantulas of specific species tend to molt could be very valuable information. Not to mention it also helps you track the age and the size of your tarantulas. Because if you're like me and sometimes you forget when you got a species or where you got it from, having an app or a spreadsheet or a notebook that has all that information really can prove beneficial in the long run. So even if you're thinking right now you don't need that information, you only have a few tarantulas, well fast forward five or ten years, a tarantula is most likely still going to be alive and you may really want that data. That's why I suggest using an app like Arachnophiles. It's got a great 
great user interface, a lot of cool features, and makes it very easy to track all of your feedings, your molts, what species you have, where you got them from, their age, their sex. You can even upload photos. I've got a whole video on that app that I will link at the end of this video. And it just so happens they're also the sponsor of today's video. Arachnophiles just released a new product called Arachnocards. If you're familiar with the app, then you know that they have photos that you can use for the species of tarantula that you keep. And it has a lot of additional information, like whether it's a terrestrial or arboreal and links to care guides and, and all kinds of cool in-app information. Well, people like the photos and the information so much, there was a lot of demand to make cards and arachnophiles came through. So you can go to their website, arachnophiles.com and pick up the first set of tarantula cards they have available. As a great photo of the tarantula species, information on whether it's new world or old world, its growth rate, venom toxicity, whether it's terrestrial, arboreal, or fossorial, the species scientific name, common name, location, lifespan, keeper level, leg span, and whether or not they have urticating hairs. High quality cards that can be a lot of fun to collect and keep or to stick to your enclosure, kind of like an information card at a zoo. So head over to arachnophiles.com or download the Arachnophiles app and pick up your own deck of arachna cards. So a huge thanks to Arachnophiles for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to this list. The number three habit for a successful tarantula keeper, and this is something that I strongly believe and use all the time, is to make a schedule and stick to it. When it comes to feeding tarantulas, whether they're spiderlings or full grown, making sure their waters are constantly changed and cleaned out, and just keeping an eye on who needs rehoused or who's doing well and who may be not doing so well, it's a really good idea to set yourself a schedule. I know that on Tuesdays and on Fridays, I'm feeding spiderlings. Tuesdays are just kind of a feeding day. Every other Tuesday, we're feeding juveniles. But whatever works for you and your animals and their needs, having a system or a schedule that repeats every week or every month can be very beneficial and, and make sure that you don't forget Get anything and using an app like arachnophiles really complements that that way you can look back and make sure you didn't actually forget to feed some spiders last tuesday again if you only have a few tarantulas this might not be the most applicable advice to you but i highly suggest getting into a good habit like this in case your collection really starts to grow and you start taking on a lot more species of tarantula or you introduce other exotic animals into your collection having a routine really helps ensure the proper care of your animals this really reduces the chance of forgetting to feed a tarantula and you won't have to check on every single tarantula every every single day to see exactly what it is that they need. You can be confident that you're providing the optimal care to your tarantula on a regular basis. You gotta work smarter, not harder. And probably the most important aspect of this particular habit is that it's gonna teach you your limits. That way you know if you're running out of time to get everybody fed, that maybe you've gone a little overboard and you need to pull back and, and not get any more tarantulas. Which brings us to our fourth habit or tip, and that is to know your limits. Keeping tarantulas should be an enjoyable experience. It shouldn't be a stressful chore that you have to do every day. Overbuying tarantulas is a real problem in the hobby. I'm not saying that people are hoarding spiders, but many people get really excited after getting their first tarantula. There's so many species out there with so many different behaviors and colors and patterns. So you start buying other tarantulas and your shelf starts filling up with little tiny spiderling enclosures. Before you know it, those tarantulas start growing and they need bigger and bigger enclosures and you quickly start running out of room in your home. Or maybe you took on way too many way too fast. At first it was fun, you were really enjoying it, but now the routine and the constant care and maintenance is starting to make you kind of burn out. When people get too many spiders too fast, burnout is a real threat. And if you get burnout and keeping tarantulas and, and caring for them and feeding them becomes a chore that you really aren't looking forward to, it's really easy for your husbandry to start slipping and spiders will die from poor husbandry. So it really becomes unhealthy for you because you're stressed and, and disgruntled, but it also becomes very unhealthy for your tarantulas. So know your limits. Don't get more tarantulas than you can handle. Take your time, be patient, grow slowly, and don't get species beyond your capabilities, your comfort level, or your experience. As you get more experience, then you can graduate to more difficult tarantulas or exotic animals. As you learn more and more about tarantulas and, and keeping exotic pets, the more you grow as a keeper and the more experience and, and information you have. Which leads us to the fifth habit of a successful tarantula keeper, and that is never stop researching and never stop learning. I think it's just human nature to learn something, to get good at it, and then to just stop and, and think, I know everything there is to know about this topic, and I am right, and what I'm doing is correct. But new information is coming out about tarantulas all the time. New species are being discovered, new scientific research is being done, more and more people are keeping tarantulas in different types of enclosures, and different types of environments, and the husbandry is constantly evolving and changing. The hobby is constantly growing. It almost seems like it's growing exponentially the past five or 10 years. And the 
more people there are out there keeping spiders, the more we're gonna learn about them. So I highly suggest you keep watching videos by tarantula content creators. Not just my videos, but everybody's videos out there about spiders. But also read forums, become members of Facebook groups and participate in the conversations. Go check out some books from the library or buy some spider or tarantula books. There's a lot of information out there. Not all of it's good. Some of it's really bad or really generic. But the more you research and the more you learn, the more you will discover what are considered reliable sources and, and what are just copy and paste ridiculous stuff from a book that was written in like the early 1990s. And when you find those reliable sources of information, bookmark them and keep checking back every couple of weeks or once a month or whatever schedule works for you. Just try to stay on top of all the new information that's coming out on a constant basis. One thing that I do that I find very helpful is I've subscribed to the BTS or the British Tarantula Society. They send out a newsletter to your email ever so often, uh, depending on the membership that you get. They'll also send out like a little magazine that's got a lot of new information about different tarantula species that have been discovered or different methods of taking care of them, different types of husbandry, different scientific research. There's a lot of really cool information in there. But I also like to follow arachnologists and some scientists that deal with invertebrates on platforms like Twitter because they're constantly sharing scientific papers that they've released or that somebody else released that has something to do with spiders and invertebrates. I just think it's really important whether you've been in the hobby for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, that you always keep an open mind and strive to learn more. Because if you stop learning, you stop growing. We are stewards of the tarantulas that we take care of and we need to make sure that we're giving them the best possible care. So if someone's trying a, a new way of keeping a tarantula, as long as it's not causing direct harm to that spider, maybe that's a good thing. They're experimenting, they're trying something new. They're taking the information that they've learned from everybody else that's kept those spiders and the husbandry that we know works well and they're trying to expound on it and improve it. Sometimes it may not work very well and other times it may be a huge success, but it's important that people are out there trying, that people are trying to evolve and develop new ways and new styles of keeping tarantulas that provide the spider with the best possible care and extend the quality of their lives. If you think you know everything there is to know about keeping tarantulas as pets or just about tarantulas in general, then that's just a big sign that you don't know anything at all. There's always more to learn, there's always more to do, and one of my favorite parts about this hobby and about making YouTube videos like this is that it keeps me researching all the time. Constantly reading new articles and research papers and watching videos and getting ideas for different videos I can make and trying to make sure I'm giving you all the most up-to-date, accurate information that I can. I don't always succeed. I make mistakes just like everybody else does, but it's awesome because if I do make those mistakes, there's always people in the comments that are correcting them and leaving links to resources with more up-to-date information or more accurate information. So don't rest on your laurels. Always be willing to evolve and learn and adapt and make use of free apps like Arachnophiles, which I'll link their video right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>